Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Alhamdulillah Allah gave us a life in which to see the holy month of Muharram and the gate of tawbah and gate of maghfirah that Allah starts a year through the gate of Surat al-Tawbah, its haqqaiq that everything is a forgiveness from the oceans of rahmah and mercy. That Allah gives this salvation as a gateway towards all realities, how much rahmah and mercy is involved in that, that Allah didn't raise it as, a, as something unachievable but grants the door to the entry as a gate of maqfirah and immense forgiveness. And this way of ours is based on muhabbat and love and understanding of the lataif al-qalb is the understanding of the house of Allah qalb al-mu'min baytullah. When Allah loves His servant He shows him His kingdom and the kingdom of Allah is within every servant's heart that this salvation was universal and that Allah has no time and every prophet and every saint and every sahabi and every ahlul bayt have an eternal reality for us. That's why the expansion of love and respect for all the prophets, for all the sahabi, for all the ahlul bayt is a completion of faith, is a completion of character. If we should leave one out there's something missing in the reality that Allah wants to establish within our heart and these timeless souls they come to teach us. When we studied the level of the heart and understood that its caretaker was Sayyidina Adam and in this eternal journey every year is a new journey towards that reality. Every year is a darajat in its understanding and every year someone should be at a different level of understanding. Means that at the level of Sayyidina Adam salam, when Allah granted immense rahmah that taught him isma kullaha, taught him all the realities, taught him all the lights and all the blessings. And shaitan came to him in paradise and tempted him. And for us a reminder that no matter where you are, what masjid you go, whatever you're doing shaitan has access to everywhere. And it's but an instant that shaitan come to fool you and make you to fall. And even whom Allah taught isma kullaha, taught all the names, taught all the realities, dressed with all these blessings that he fell from grace. And the first ashura and the first level of the adab of ashura, it's not only just one event, it's a lifetime of events. And it's in the history of mankind that every Prophet has something to teach us of its reality. Sayyidina Adam comes into our life and teaches, if you want to know about your heart which is the house of Allah that Allah raised my status, dressed me from knowledges, dressed me from these lights and in these blessings and shaitan fooled me because he came into paradise. And I never thought that in that paradise there would be a shaitan. Means that wherever we are in life that shaitan has access and coming after us. And when Sayyidina Adam fell from grace and cried for 40 years asking for Allah's forgiveness and he had had an event and had seen things in paradises 
And the key to maghfira and to forgiveness when Allah showed Sayyidina Adam, Sayyidina Jibreel came to Sayyidina Adam and gave him a tour of paradise and showed him what he needed to show him of realities and taught him some words. And after 40 years of crying Allah put into his heart to remember and immediately he asked Allah Allahu Ya Hamid Abu Haqqa Muhammad. Ya Ali, Ya Aliyun Ba Haqqa Ali that by the reality of Imam Ali Salam and Safat Al Ali the Most High, Ya Allahu Ya Khaliq Ba Haqqa Fatima Tuzal, Ya Rahman Ba Haqqa Imam Al Hasan, Ya Raheem Ba Haqqa Imam Al Husayn. As soon as he uttered these words Allah asked that, had you asked anything by using these words I would have granted to you. Now repeat and ask your du'a and then he gave from Ayatul Kareem the du'a that he asked Allah for forgiveness. But this bab of maghfirah is a reminder for us that in the name of Sayyidina Muhammad in that reality of Prophet Allah's contentment and love that for the sake of the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad I forgive you, I bless you and I dress you, قُلِينِ كُنْتُمْ تُهِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَتَّبِيُونِي وَيُهِبُّكُمُ اللَّهِ Means everything for us and every gate for us, it's opening. Sayyidina Adam comes to teach us that ask Allah to forgive you for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad for the sake of his beloved Ahlul Bayt, for the sake of his companions whom they reached immense stations of proximity and dresses of might and majesty. Ya Rabbi for their sake forgive us and enter to this gate of tawbah. And then in another year Sayyidina Anu will come into our lives. Means these are immense gates of maghfirah, forgiveness and dresses of blessing upon the soul. The one who seeks, seeks a, a course of knowledge to give a knowledge to his reality is an immense blessing from Allah not to stay ignorant and not to, to think that it's just a story of old and has gone. That each of the Prophets of Allah are coming to complete a favour upon our soul. Sayyidina Nuh comes. And teaches that build your ship, build your ship and it, your ship is your faith and build your ship on a mountain with no rain for 40 years he's built his ship. And his community laughed at him and mocked at him and attacked him and Allah granted in najat when the flood began and all difficulty began and his ship which was his faith and for us a ship is our faith that Allah will test us in a way that makes no sense to anyone but you and your Lord. And then Allah after he had flooded the entire world he granted on Ashura a najat, a najat for Sayyidina Nuh that as soon as Ashura came, the tenth of Muharram came, the land was spotted and the ship landed and he reached to Allah's safety. And Allah is reminding within ourselves the immense lights of these ten days that I'm going to test you. And all the emails that are coming in of testing and difficulties and sickness 
is all a reminder that we're like Sayyidina Nu salam that Allah is going to test us and we are going to be put through difficulty. And each time we ask when Muharram comes, Ya Rabbi grant us a maqfirah and let this ship of difficulty to end, let my soul to reach to your lands of salvation. Once you traverse the storms of sadness and difficulty and despair, Allah will bring a rehu siba, an angel who carries your soul to the shore of safety. Means that Allah has found satisfaction in your struggle and on this land that your soul has landed is Allah's ridan satisfaction. And everything that comes to you of difficulty it doesn't penetrate because you know that within your being and within your soul Allah is dressing you from lights and blessing you from lights. So there's an immense reality of testing and, and building our ship and doing things that don't make sense to everyone but in our heart we know what Allah wants from us. And we go to Sayyidina Ibrahim and Sayyidina Musa salam and same examples. The Sayyidina Ibrahim salam was saved from the fire of Nimrod of every type of difficulty. This dunya is a Nimrod that throws every type of fire at you to make you to explode and to be angry. And if you take that course your whole life will be anger. And everything about you will be narani and fiery. And Sayyidina Ibrahim comes into our life and reminds us that bring that fire inside of you. Don't let that fire to burn you and Allah will grant you on Ashura the ability to bring that fire as a himma within your heart. Because at that level of Sayyidina Ibrahim and Sayyidina Musa has very much to do with the internal fire of Allah This is from Alam al-Mithal in the world of light when it Allah want to begin to open the world of light. You reach to an ashura in which Allah said that, you fought anger, you fought anger, you fought the external fire. And Allah opens for you in your heart an internal fire. If you fought the external fire Allah opens an, an eternal in fire inside and sun, internal and eternal fire. The Sayyidina Ibrahim comes to teach, قُلْ يَا نَارُ كُنِي بَادًا وَسَلَامًا Be cool towards every fire, hold your qadab, control your anger. So that Allah can give a trust, a light within your being, within your soul to make you to be something eternal and then that was the fire that Sayyidina Musa saw. When he approached the Divine the Presence and he saw Allah as a burning bush, he saw the condition of his own heart because you don't ever see Allah but you see Allah in the condition that you're in, Maqam al ihsan is to see Allah in all your worshipness. But there's no location for Allah but what you do see is you see the condition of yourself. If you're bad and angry you see and you find the Lord that matches your character. And your Lord becomes something angry and bad for you and that's why so many people do awful things in the name of their Lord. Because Allah say, have you seen those who make their desires their Lord? But when they've been cleaned and they've been purified in their qadab which is the most hated characteristic is brought down then their true beauty can begin to come out. And when they meet Allah they meet with the heart that's on fire from sadness, from difficulty and despair. The difficulty of 
everything around them, the difficulty of fighting their characteristics and their desires. And then Allah appears in that reality of that burning fire, means I'm the fire within your heart that now has become your faith. I'm the fire in your being that becomes your himmah. My Divine Light now is emanating within your heart and your heart has become my home. As a result of being my home you become like Sayyidina Musa whom is Kalimullah, talks in that Divinely Light. Become like Sayyidina Ibrahim that becomes Khalilullah, a dear and endeared person in that Divinely Light, in that Divinely Presence within your own heart. Because that light is now residing within your heart. That was from Ashanura. Means immense lights are given on Ashura, but they have to go in stages. They have to go based on the knowledge and struggling with the knowledge, based on faith and struggling with one's faith. Has to go with fighting with one's anger and fires. So that it becomes a fire of ishq and love for Divinely Presence and then becomes the reality that handed to Sayyidina Isa salam. And Sayyidina Isa salam teaches, I was raised on Ashura. That when all of dunya came to crucify me and reminds us that if they sold me for a bag of coins they will sell you in your life for less than even the bag. Don't do what you do in this way of religion, in this way of spirituality for anyone other than Allah and His Rasul If you do something for someone and for a person and they disappoint you and you become heartbroken from that. You, you lose your understanding and they come and teach you that, why did you do for other people? We told you that other people would betray you, would sell you, would dispose of you like a disposable plate. And the only one whom only loves you and raises you and never turns from you is Allah and His Beloved. Sayyidina Muhammad So it means they, they teach the sincerity of niyat and it's such a deep intention that whatever you think you're doing for other people is okay but it's purely should be for Allah Everyone else will disappoint you in life. If you're okay with that then you should have no expectations and be happy with whatever Allah bestows upon you in your life. And Sayyidina Isa comes and tells that when you feel that freedom of not being connected to people, not doing anything for people, not trying to get the outcome from people but for Allah they all come to get you and Allah will raise you to His Divinely Presence. And that's the reality of that miraj that begins to open. That if what you're doing is for the satisfaction of people, go get your reward from them. But if whatever you do people are always coming against you with their hasad, with their jealousy and with their comments. Your, your salvation and your miraj is with Allah's Divinely Hand that lift you always to His Presence. If Allah is happy with you and Sayyidina Muhammad was happy with you, it doesn't matter what anyone else has to say. And that is the reality of being raised into Divinely Presence. They understood that their sustainer and their maintainer is only Allah And if the whole world tries to block them, 
But Allah is with them, they can move through a mountain. And if Allah is not with them and the whole world wants to help them, nothing can happen to that person, nothing can be achieved by that person. Then we understood this muharram of the Prophets of Allah that they're perfecting our character. When your character understood the reality of Sayyidina Isa salam and understood the, the depth of that reality and its haqqaiqs, Sayyidina Isa salam says, now you're really ready for the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And then the reality of the hijrah opens, that if you're Muhammadiyoon that Allah wanted for us to struggle, struggle in the level of your heart, 13 years of struggling at least with all of the, all of the difficulties and idols. And then Allah inshaAllah opened the city of lights because once you've been on that miraj the Sayyidina Isa is teaching, your miraj is to where? Is to Medina to Munawwara into a city of lights. And these lights are Hadigat al-Muhammadiyya and Nur al-Muhammadi, these beautific lights from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad in which your soul is in a continuous miraj and a continuous blessings and, and dressings that cannot be even understood. We pray that Allah Grant us the understanding of this miraj and the understanding of this way, the understanding of self-sacrifice that Imam Ali Salam comes to teach us, be truthful in your character and in your deeds. Live a life of sacrificing, if you can't sacrifice stopping your drugs, you can't sacrifice stopping your smoking, you can't sacrifice stopping drinking. You can't sacrifice stopping pornography, you can't sacrifice stopping all these bad characteristics. This is the jihad al-Akbar, not take a stick and hit somebody for no reason. The greatest stick is the one that you hit against yourself where there is no victory, just punishment to yourself and continuous punishment to yourself. That's what Prophet moon from us. Is that struggle and fight against yourself and bad desires. That becomes the sacrifice and the characteristic of futuwa that Sayyidina Imam Ali is teaching to us. And be truthful and noble in your characteristics and do everything for the sake of Sayyidina Muhammad That carry the noble sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad not as a burden, not as something that you're trying to get rid of, not as something that we're trying to hide but as a noble gift. Every nation came to ask and beg Sayyidina Muhammad for something from his ummah. Nabi Musa begged for the cane, the asa, that grant me an asa because everything has to come from the authority of Prophet When he asked the Divine that grant me an asa, grant me a support, that has to come from the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad and he gave this to his nation like his children, he gave it to them as a gift. We pray that Allah grant us that iman and that reality of Islam and to witness maqam al-ihsan and that Allah open for us the realities of Ashura and Ashanura and alhamdulillah that it's on the app. Download the app, click on Muharram and has all the general adab, has the adab for Ashura, has everything on that app for us to read from the articles to read and what to recite on the day of Ashura that coming in next week inshaAllah. And that leads us to the Muhammadan reality of self-sacrifice and the master of self-sacrifice Sayyid al-Shuhada Imam al-Husayn
that leads and shows us that how to sacrifice oneself, how to leave these bad desires, bad characteristics and that to do what you do for the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad not for the cursing of people, not for the cursing of the nation but serve and live a life of service to Sayyidina Muhammad and save this nation. The nation that got the da'wah and the nation that has not yet received the da'wah and that's our responsibility, this is the highest purpose of life and that's why only Allah come into our life. If your life is only purpose was to eat, drink and use the facilities you have wasted your life. But if your purpose was to support these da'wahs, support the propagation of this knowledge, support the love of Sayyidina Muhammad with what you earn from work, what you earn from your hands, what you earn from your understanding, this is the highest form of existence. The Ya Rabbi that I live amongst the people, I work and I do amongst the people but from what you granted to me I propagate Tahzim and Nabi, I propagate the love of Sayyidina Muhammad And they live their life like that and they encourage their students and those whom like their teachings to live the same. Make your life have a purpose, not self-serving. Don't live a life that just serves you. You eat, you make, you do your own thing for no other purpose other than yourself. But live a life in which we are of service to that reality and that we may gain the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad We pray that Allah address us, bless us, bless you, forgive me if I said anything wrong. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.